Hey, what's up? We're back, and as promised... Ooh, I bet my voice is super loud, isn't it? Well, anyways, as promised, moving on to Whistleblower now. Uh, everything ready here. Oh, all right, let's do it. Playing as Mr. Waylon Park, a Murkoff employee. Also known as the Whistleblower. The person who emails the main character of the main campaign. Prompts him to come investigate. Somebody hit you? Here. Let me help. <sighs> kind of busy here. Pretty ho. Shit. You're not happy about it? Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Come on. Two hours earlier. So this is the email that we read at the beginning of the main campaign. They've paged for you three times already. There's something urgent at the engine. What are you doing in here anyway? I thought you were just a software guy. I'm worried about losing anti My money isn't bad. The doctor was predicting assembly by 150. We're not being given enough information to trust Wernicke's predictions. He's been right so far. I just want to know we're inventing something other than shiny new cancers. You're Whalen Park, aren't you? Why weren't you answering the page? I'll tell them you're incoming. We're back to Redville to pick up Jane, then we're headed out to the lake. That sounds all right. I didn't think I'd miss her this much. It's the patient. Start to realize they haven't seen a woman or a child in shit years now, right? How long's it been since you've seen Jane? Three weeks now? <sighs> That's nothing. You're serious? Sure. You got a girlfriend or somebody? I'm married. How long since you've seen her? Honestly, I'm not even sure. Christ, Waylon, hurry up. They're waiting on you. Ah. You're cutting it close. Next patient's incoming and arterial spin still dark. We need you at the front. Ah, for fuck's sake. They've got Gluskin out of his cell. Park. We got a patient 30 seconds out. We're flying inside of Ask them to delay. No. I don't need another evaluation. Park here is gonna have us up and running before we even know it. Have 
Have you missed a park? Uh, is, MRI is still dark. You're doubting our friend. Leland Park? Which I consider more than unkind to its programming skill and considerable dedication to the Murkoff Corporation. Fuck me, they're bringing him in. Yourself. This is a high security. It's all right, Agent. Mr. Park was just surprised. I'm sure he's still calm and eager to finish his work. What's going on in here? Just get my laptop and be on my way. Somebody's been telling stories outside of class. On the floor! Park. Consulting contract 8208. Software engineer with a level 3 security clearance. Graduated cum laude from Berkeley, but still somehow not smart enough to realize that the last thing a fly ought to do in a spider's web is wiggle. Somehow dumb enough to think that a borrowed laptop, onion router, and firewall patch would be enough to fool the world's leading supplier of biometric security. Stupid, Mr. Park. More than stupid. In fact, that was crazy. I'm afraid we're going to have to have you committed. Mr. Park, will you willingly submit to forced confinement? Did you hear that, Agent? He said yes, Mr. Blair. Great. Oh, and uh, did I just hear Mr. Wayland Park volunteer for the Morphogenic Engine Program? Well, that's what I heard, Mr. Blair. That was brave indeed, Wayland. The Murkoff Corporation and the Onward March of Science both appreciate your bravery and sacrifice. Maybe you could administer Mr. Park here a light anesthetic. Gladly.
Come to join our therapy session. Here, take the blade. Keep around in our frame here. Get a little red on your hands. It's always healthy to express yourself. You keep it bottled up too long and you might do something you regret. No. You're one of those. Too good for the likes of us. Think you're different? Something special? There are no observers here. Now, get the fuck out of here before I change my mind. I fucked up. Oh god, where am I? Hours could have passed, or weeks. Brain filled with static. It made me watch the... the engine. Have to get help. Have to call for help. Lisa, I'm sorry. If I die, I know you'll find me. I know you won't rest until you find my body. I hope you find this camera with my corpse. I hope the evidence on it does what I couldn't. Exposes the truth. Lisa, baby, I'm so sorry. I fucked up. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I fucked up bad. There's a radio in the prison. Shortwave. If it's electronic, I can make it talk, make it work for me. There's hope, Lisa. I'm coming home to you. My mistake was subtlety, like you always said. I thought leaking information to a few journalists was the safer way. I didn't want the spotlight, the attention. Markov is dangerous, I know that. I thought I had to be subtle for your sake, Lisa, for the boys. But I should have exposed what Markov is doing to the world. I should have shouted to anyone and everyone, I can't die. Not before I reach the radio. They can't cover this up now, it's too broken, too dangerous. What you doing? like you. Stole these clothes from a dead body I found. You gotta get me out of here. Please, just push the button. Open the door. We can get out of here together. Stop that. No, stop! Stop it! Stop! Stop that! Liar! Stop! 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 I 
I'd never seen a man die before today, never seen a dead body outside of a coffin. Dozens today murdered and worse. I looked into one man's eyes as another tore him to pieces, claimed he was a doctor, then saw the rags they've dressed me in and changed his story, said he was a patient. Could have been either. They're all crazy, all sick. No real difference between them now. The therapy's spreading, and what am I? I watched this man die and only thought, it's not me, thank God. I know I'll die someday. I don't want to be murdered. From J. Blair at MarkoffCorp.us.com to H. Grant at MarkoffCorp.us.com. Subject resignation for mental health, CCA 208. <coughs> Ms. Grant, you may receive requests for information from a Ms. Lisa Park or of Leadville, CO, in the coming weeks concerning the resignation and hospitalization of her husband, Waylon. If so, please forward them to my personal attention. Waylon Park, former consulting contract 8208, resigned due to previously undiagnosed mental illness. I personally visited Miss Lisa Park and her sons and broke the news to them, with the silver lining that Murkoff Psychiatric would be graciously providing treatment. Miss Park had some less than charitable things to say about myself and the Murkoff Corporation. I assured her that with her power of attorney, she could try to fight the doctor's diagnosis of her husband's illness. However, if it were discovered that he resigned under false pretenses, his insurance, his insurance would be cancelled and the family would be saddled with not insignificant healthcare debts. Hopefully she understood, but if she insists on making a nuisance of herself or tries to get around me, please let me know. This is one I want to take care of personally. Yours, Jeremy Blair. <laughs> Don't ask to see my body, Lisa, when I die, when you finish the lawsuits that let you pry this footage from Murkoff's army of lawyers and corporate hitmen. Don't make them show you my body. Just bury it or burn it. Let my sons remember me whole. That man is eating human flesh. He looks at me and I see anger, a little desire, but more than anything, hunger. Please don't make them show you my body. Save me! Save me! Save me! Save me! 
slippery, little fucker. Oh, wait. Oh, so that was our on. He's just not. He just doesn't have any for some reason. more batteries. Hello? the store. Or was the store already open? Maybe it was. But someone was beating on a door. They've now stopped. Case MM120007152071, update 271, form note, all material herein to be transcribed according to form 4083 with forensic revisions as benefits, ongoing lawsuit 1200715. Author, Ethan Shriskandaraja. Ethan Shriskandaraja. Notes, this is a request for specific legal consultation in the ongoing lawsuit by Melissa Cho against Murkoff Charitable Psychiatry, Inc., USA, originally filed in 2010. At the time of Ms. Cho's termination, the psychosomatic effects of the morphogenic engine on female employees and patients had been well established. Already, more than seven female employees and patients had reached fictitious half-term pregnancies in a matter of weeks before miscarrying the non-existent children, five of them fatally. Female employees were moved to higher floors in the facility, then to other buildings, and eventually entirely off of the Mount Massive facility. The critical secrecy of Project Wall Rider necessitated secrecy in the motivating factor for the reassigned and term for the reassignments and terminations, resulting in perceived injustice from several terminated parties. Ms. Cho has succeeded in acquiring a court-ordered FOIA release of the documents surrounding her termination. Those documents will need to be generated and post-dated, providing ameliorating information while skirting the relevant secrecies of the project. Please advise Ethan Suskendaraja, consultant MM214.
Oh shit! Is that ladder here? Excerpt from the recordings of Dr. Bruce Newhouse, M.D., employed by Mount Massive Hospital, 1958 through 1965. Father Clark, far be it from me to lie to a man of God, so let me at least say that I will do my personal best to improve the safety of your working conditions. I and the rest of the staff truly appreciate everything you do for our patients, and if you feel threatened by anybody in particular, simply let us know and we can either increase chemical restraints or administer a lobotomy or similar calming procedure. Don't underestimate the contribution your sermons offer our patients, especially considering the depth and necessarily chaotic nature of hypnotherapy. Our patients need the bedrocks of God and family. Not all of our poor unfortunates have families to call upon, and so the burden and calling is yours. We are all of us relying on your faith and hard work. DBNR, Dr. Newhouse, MD, May 20th, 1961. Oh, uh, climb up here? Oh, yeah, okay. Makes sense.
stupid. I can't move him, Graham. We're almost done. How did he get in there? Oh, I'm dead. Lisa, whoever finds this, know that Murkoff is making monsters. I've never seen the patients after they'd gone through that German so-called therapy, the engine, so much worse than I could have imagined. They may still be human, but something's been ripped out of them, and too many other things pushed back in. They weren't all murderers. They were sick, but they weren't killers. Murkoff made them monsters. Dr. Rossett said the engine had varying effects. The variant outcomes too erratic for any sort of prediction. I took it as idle cafeteria small talk. Rawls endless chatter. I should have listened. Oh. oh, there's a rip here. Excerpt from 1957 and comment on IG report operations of TSD-7 influencing human behavior. E. The potential use of psychochemicals in political action operations is well recognized, although it has not been explored as thoroughly as might be expected. Chemical division includes it as an objective of its program to be prepared to support or make such operations possible. Non-chemical methods of accomplishing political action operations are also included in the program. Note, J. Lawler, April 15, 1958. Present the above MK Ultra excerpt to Technical Services Division for budgeting and an authorization of continued research into research of Dr. Rudolf Wernicke, Asset 14866, and Project Wallrider. Autopsy of recovered test subjects shows chemical content of bodies, metallic tumors, evidence of subdermal combustion that indicate heavy psychochemical dosage. 
C note 92387 HS Berlin 6 September 1938. Oh, shit. Murkoff Psychiatric Systems, Project War Rider, Mount Massive CO, Case Number 209, Patient Frank Antonio Minera, Consultation Dated 2012-829, Initial Date of Patient Consult 2010-1101, Patient Age 36, Gender Male, Observing Physician Dr. Carl Houston, DBNR, Therapy Status, Minimal Morphogenic Engine Activity and Only at Extreme, Stages 5 and 6, Levels of Hormone Therapy. Dream states return repeatedly to images of isolation and betrayal, zero lucid state. Diagnostics, heavy bronchial accumulation consistent with patients with histories of tobacco and marijuana, exceptionally low REM activity. Interview notes, at the time of this interview, Fink was down to 155 pounds from his admission weight of 228. He was lethargic and largely non-responsive, exhibiting interest only in the hypnotherapy script pattern 9, Fernicky. Concerning drinking blood from the chest of sleeping men, he continues to refuse baths or the attention of a barber outside of general anesthesia, stating, If I cannot partake, I cannot share. Recommend forced nutrition for Mr. Monero if we cannot find something he likes to eat. Markov Psychiatric Systems Project, Wall Rider, Mount Massive, CO. I know what he likes to eat. Go away!
Okay, well, see, the problem is I don't even know where I'm supposed to go. Up here? Can I climb up here? Yeah, okay. A scream. Is it him, the cannibal? Could be pleasure, pain, pain. I won't guess. I'm not sure he'd even know. His voice sounds like, like something I wanted while watching the engine. Its only message is hunger to crush and consume. I'm going to try and forget it, Lisa. If I get out of here, I'm going to come back to you. so foggy out here, it's like impossible to see. It's even harder to see with the night vision on, honestly. Oh my god, what happened? I don't even know what happened. Someone just run into me? Jesus Christ. He's playing alone and losing. That's what the game is. There's a mathematical proof. If you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and so on up to infinity, you can't arrive at an answer. If you stop shy of infinity, you have an indescribably large number. If you continue all the way to infinity, you arrive at 1 twelfth. Negative 0 0.083333 repeating. I'm losing my grip on things. 
thinking about the drive here, 400 miles in a rented truck, the job that shows up just in time to cover our bills, our debts, the insurance, the boys sleeping in the back, nothing but AM radio, gospel, country western, late night, paranoiac talk radio. We sang Patsy Cline songs and laughed at conspiracies of aliens and ghosts. Mile marker numbers passing and headlights. I don't want to die here. What the fuck? Wait, where am I supposed to go? Store doesn't open. Hello. From J. Billings at MarkovCorp.us.com to K. Vigilando at MarkovCorp.us.com. Subject, R.E. Patient Samuel. Uh, Kurt, we've got another one, and I'm not sure you're going to be able to check it off as psychopathic proximity disorder. Security guard all the way up in the admin block is our latest non-patient employee to start seeing Wernicke's fairy tales. He was never directly exposed to the engine, never even made it below level 1 in the building. It would be an enormous breach of protocol and security. 
If doctors were speaking of the wall rider within hearing of a contracted security guard, and it seems vanishingly improbable that he would stumble onto such an obscure mythological story on his own. It's too similar to the Dr. Samuel case, or the others before him. It's one thing for formally sane medical personnel to fall under the delusions of their patients. It's another thing entirely for those beliefs to be, I don't know, airborne. We need to talk in person. Billings. Science, but it's not. They were waiting for us in this place. Billy understood. They've always been here. There you go, Jeremy Blair. I did you that favor. Somebody who looks as much like a priest as this place looks like an asylum, writing instructions on the wall, talking about God, tells me not to be afraid. 
How was I ever a part of this inhuman bullshit, greed-driven moral genocide? The monsters Murkoff ripped from tortured minds, the links their jackbooted business school worms will go to protect it, their own men slaughtered? I've never prayed in my life, Lisa, but if some small-minded interventionist god is listening, kill Jeremy Blair before I die. Sanity and avarice, there's no pain he doesn't deserve. There is no radio, no hope of reaching the outside world, only escape. Down the drain. From J. Blair at MurkoffCorp.us.com to R. Traeger at MurkoffCorp.us.com. Subject, false pregnancies slash real profits. Rick, fun hitting the greens last week. We should make the drive more often. I was reviewing some old test records from the early days of Project War Rider, and something sparked my interest. Were you following the project back in 2010? Apparently we had issues with female employees experiencing psychosomatic pregnancies. Something to do with how the morphogenic engine interacts with the immune system. All Greek to me, am I right? It was more often fatal than not, and these employees these were employees, not patients, so a little harder to sweep under the rug, but the morphogenic engine activity in these ladies' marrow was off the charts, and these are women who were never even exposed to additional hormone therapy. Now, I don't know PPM from a kick in the teeth, but I can read a spreadsheet, and if the projected profits from Project Wallrider are half what they say they are, I've just got one question. Why aren't we performing experiments on women? God knows mental illness is an equal opportunity affliction. Seems unethical to pass up on such a potential windfall. Sincerely, Chair. Oh God, one of them's coming. It's not even human anymore. Fuck it. Shut it Kill us. Burn the building. Worse than death here. Kill us.
Power is still on electricity. I need to think, Lisa. I thought the power was evidence that some manageable, some human force still controlled some small part of Mount Massive, but nothing human or sane can do anything here but survive, and even that, not for long. You were always the reasonable one, reasonable one, Lisa. You would tell me to calm down, to take a larger view. Man, it's an inhumanity rule, this place. Whatever is keeping the electricity flowing is trying to trap me here. I need to shut it down again? I mean, it was just the patient who turned it back on, right? No? Oh! <laughs> Fuck you. Ah, oh, you bitch. Okay. They should have just made it like a different button to shut the door behind you. Because it's so like finicky. Am I even being chased anymore? I don't think I am. Oh!
Is this music supposed to still be playing? I kind of feel like it's a bug at this point. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be playing. <laughs> I'm not even being chased. Side. Like the harder I try to escape, the deeper I get. Dead men aren't a surprise anymore. Suicides seem wise. From in Wolfram at MurkoffCorp.us.com to F Ford at MurkoffCorp.us.com. Subject: Disassociative Dennis. Doctor Ford, I conducted another interview with your patient Dennis this afternoon, and have to agree with your suspicions. In the course of a 45 and a 40-minute interview, I had wide exposure to all four of Dennis's expressed personalities. As near as I could tell, two brothers, their father, and their grandfather. They seemed primarily concerned with some sort of life-threatening flood, though there was little consistency between this event having already happened or threatening imminent arrival. The clarity of his delusion and performative nature of the personality's expression certainly suggests malingering. I admittedly fall in the first... Furstenberg camp of categorical skepticism of dissociative personality disorder, but Dennis's case seems clearly um, invented by an attention-seeking patient, more likely symptoms of gross narcissism and obsessive compulsive disorder. Continue with shock therapy. Sincerely, Dr. Wolfram. Oh, 
leech pissing down on us. We agree. Oh hell no. What fresh hell? A man's body mutilated and bent to mimic or mock the moment of birth? The kind of thing a man cannot see without changing in some irreparable way. At least I was with you when both our boys were born. It was until recently the most miraculous thing I had seen. Completely outside of reasonable belief and yet somehow central to everything. I've come to believe since you always said I was too literal minded. Tried to turn everything into an if-then statement. Lately I've widened my horizons. How can the things I've seen here be? But I know the answer. Money, profit, things we made just because we could. He's Canadian. Or is he, is he in here? I can't tell.
Rather die than be with me. My love's arbor. Darling, you can't hide from me. You make yourself a gift for me. A delicacy to be unwrapped and unwrapped again. And savored. Here we go. I've been a little vulgar, and I want to say I'm sorry. I just... You know how a man gets when he wants to know me. But after the ceremony, when I've made an honest woman of you, I promise I'll be a different man. family, a legacy, to be the father I never had. I'll never let anything happen to our children. Not like... I have to wait here. I know you must be just as eager as I am to consummate our love. But try to enjoy it. Darling, I need you to try to bleed less. I know the fair sex often endure the same wounds with your suffering, but you really need to make an effort. I'm so sorry, darling. Love isn't for everybody. <clears throat> Hold still now, darling. 
All these unsightly hairs. Oh, <laughs> silky smooth, like a little girl again. Now the more delicate bits. No! No, don't! Please! Oh, God! You've given up. You're ugly. And you've given up on love. You're not even worth stringing up. Oh, God. Bleed here. And I... You have amazing bone structure, such soft skin. You're going to be beautiful. A woman has to suffer some things. It's not pleasant, I know. But just try to endure. For my sake. For the sake of our children. It won't take long. A few snips at the flesh here and here, cut away everything vulgar. A soft place to welcome my seed, to grow our family. The incision will hurt, and the conception. And birthing is never easy. I'll make the cut fast. Just close your eyes and think of your children. Get back here! Took all my batteries? Bastard.
Bodies hanging like wet laundry, like skinned rabbits, men mutilated, hunted, and murdered. The shortest distance between any two points separates violence and ruined lust. Whatever story he's telling himself, he's not making women to bear his children. He's making women to kill them. Lisa, I want you to burn this place and any evidence that ever existed to the ground. Destroy the Murkoff Corporation, bury it in shame, take away its money, wipe it from history. This man thinks he's in love, he thinks the therapy made him better. Everything reeks of death and fear, piss and coppery blood, meat decomposing to game. One more. I try, and I try. You all betrayed me. You can hang. 
Like the rest of them. Heavier than you look. If this is you on the honeymoon, I hate to imagine our anniversary. Hold still. God damn it, what are you? Come! No! Damn it, darling! No, you need to behave! We could have been beautiful. He's dead. The amateur surgeon, father to be, husband, has got shredded and pulled from his belly. I'm trying not to laugh. But God, Lisa, I swear to you, I'm trying. chapel on fire in the distance. I didn't even know we had a church. Where's God when you need him? me a lifetime and not all of them attached to a man let's wrap this up and get back to the truck amen corporate cops mercenaries private military contractors whatever they call them now they're as helpless as the rest of us need to get out escape From Helen Grant to Group 8416 at MurkoffCorp.lu, subject Rudolph Vernicke, phase out. Dear sirs, the groundwork has been laid to ensure an uneventful, e uneventful egress for Rudolph Vernicke from structural and financial systems at Mount Massive. His advanced age should alleviate any suspicions among contractors and employees, among whom he has been cheerfully nicknamed the Crypt Keeper, and legally speaking, he died years ago. I understand patients 14306-8, 14279-1, and 14868-1 have already been scheduled for transit. We're all terribly excited at the obvious profit potential of the new project. My researchers have com combed through Wernicke's files and found no mention of the three lucid dreamers. I think we can safely assume Wernicke was sufficiently distracted by the partial success of patient Billy Hope, along with his own infirmity, to be ignorant of the real discovery at hand. Even minimal exploitation of these resources is hard to overestimate. I only hope that the new facility is sufficiently shielded to allow female staff, so I can see what comes with my own eyes. Respectfully, Helen Granite. It's a typo, right? It's supposed to be Grant. Helen Grant, Murkoff Legal Mitigation Department.
Oh, my leg's better. Miraculously. So we didn't find the file talking about Billy Gluskin. I figured it would be in the church with him, so maybe I missed it. Um, transfer authorization for patients 14306-8, From Murkoff Psychiatric Systems, Mount Massive, to Murkoff ARD, Zeichner Facility. Caution, level triple black security protocols, including chemical restraint, physical restraint, and separate adaptive hyperbaric chambers are to be used at all time in transit. Chemical stimulation is highly recommended for all personnel within 500 meters of the patients. Attempts at communication should be assumed to be hallucinations and disregarded. Facial disfigurement should not be taken as a sign of lost acuity. They are physically blind but not unseeing. Note, security clearance for Project Wall Rider will not apply to information regarding patients... One, two, three. New security clearances will be issued and appropriate protocol assigned. Mr. Park, <laughs> how the fuck are you still alive? <sighs> Let's make a deal. Y you help me. Uh, help me up, please. Jeremy Blair, my supervisor's supervisor, a man who'd see me skinned, salted, and raped for a promotion and a few martinis, injured, dying if he's not already dead. I'm trying to feel sorry for him, really I am, but there's no way in hell he stopped me from getting out of this god for a second place. I'm coming home, Lisa.
You press that button. It's no going back, Mr. Park. There's enough hard evidence in that video file to make a world of shit for our friends at Murkoff. You got out of Mount Massive alive, and we've done everything in our power to cover your tracks. But our enemies are twitching and malicious corporate paranoics with resources you're too moral to imagine. You won't be the only target. Anyone you care about, your wife, your child, there'll be nothing to murk off but ways to hurt you. I need you to understand the bridge you're crossing here. You will do irrevocable damage to the company. You might even get close to something like justice. But once you click upload, your life is over. Everyone you love is fucked. But it's the right thing to do. Is hurting Murkoff worth that much to you? All right, there we go. That was Whistleblower. Outlast Whistleblower. All right. Catch you in the next one. Bye.